To dig deeper into the results of the midterm elections, let's bring in Brian Brown, political science professor at St. John's University. Nice to see you again, Brian. Good to be with you. So, Brian, I just reported on the landslide wins in Florida. Let's start there. Governor DeSantis and Senator Marco Rubio both won big in Miami-Dade County, which had been a toss-up in recent elections. Is Florida losing its swing state status? It could be. I mean, one thing about Florida, you get the results early in the evening, and it looked like it was going to be a good night for Republicans. Uh, Ron DeSantis certainly overperformed on what was kind of an underperforming evening for national Republicans. But it's a red state. It's deeper red. Uh, he uh, performed well, uh, creating a coalition of working class whites and Hispanics and, and really uh, running a, a, an effective statewide campaign. Yeah, and there's talk that his big win makes DeSantis the GOP favorite for the presidential race in 2024. How does this fare for former President Donald Trump? Well, the die is cast for what looks like it's going to be a raucous primary that certainly will feature those two and maybe more. But uh, Ron, Ron DeSantis had a good night, um, and uh, he certainly becomes a front runner. Um, and the Republican Party is going to have to do some soul searching on how they want to proceed uh, ahead of the presidential election. All right, now to New York. Governor Kathy Hochul is the projected winner. Republican Lee Zeldin ran on fighting crime, which, as you can see from this graphic, is up underground 41 percent. And he talked a lot about bail reform. So high crime wasn't enough to hand him a win. But since the race was so close, what message does this send to the governor? Well, Lee Zeldin ran on all crime all the time, and it was an effective, although not a successful message. Now that Governor Hochul uh, is elected, and, and congratulations to her making history as the first female governor of New York, you know, she really has to examine the issue of bail reform and doing something about crime. It was the closest gubernatorial race that we've seen in New York in decades. Uh, she certainly has to do something to appease uh, the, the voters who came out against her and to change the narrative that she is soft on crime and the Democratic Party is soft on crime. And that really involves dealing with the state legislature and doing something effective about bail reform. Mm -hmm. All right. As for the national races, Republicans predicted a red wave, but that's not what happened. I'm hearing people call it a ripple or a puddle. You know, what happened here? Well, um, aside from New York, uh, the, you know, the red wave really didn't happen. And uh, I think what, what you did see was um, crime and inflation certainly were factors um, you know, you saw a success on Long Island and some of the suburbs and the Hudson Valley, uh, certainly some turnover in, in seats there. But it was not this overwhelming event that uh, many pundits and some of the polls seem to indicate. So what I think people seem to, to want or, is leadership. Uh, and that might be something. A lot of these races are decided on very individual and granular type of personalities and issues. It was not a good night for election deniers. Um, I think the democracy discussion is one that is, is serious and, and people are worried about the validity of elections and, and that type of thing. So, you know, we're a very divided country. We went to bed a divided country. We woke up a divided country and we really need leaders to work to pull our country together. Amen. Brian Brown, political science professor at St. John's University. Thanks for being with us. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christine Persichetti, anchor of Currents News. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button on this video. And if you want to see more content just like it, subscribe and click on the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching because we are putting your faith in the news.